Our next guest says not to chase bear market bounces in the new year. He does have three picks, though, for your portfolio to weather the current volatility. Joining us now is Troy Gajewski. He's the chief market strategist of FS Investments. Good to see you again. Welcome back. Uh, it's going to be. Thank you. You too. It's, it's hard to get people to want to put new capital into this market. Why should they right now? Well, I think you want to continue to be very cautious because the Fed continues to drain liquidity at a record pace. We've actually never seen money supply contract at this rate before in history. And so you should really try to protect capital, you know, favor alternatives like senior secured commercial real estate lending or multi-strategy solutions that have a chance to make six, seven, eight percent in here. Uh, those are the things you should really focus on. Strategies that did well in 22 that have a better opportunity going into 23 relative to 22. And fortunately, since alternatives are now democratized, the average investor has the same choices or at least very similar choices to a Yale endowment or a Soros family office or a CalPERS or a Saudi sovereign wealth fund, Scott. So that, that's what we recommend for the time being, focused on Northwest Quadrant and the efficient frontier strategies, very little risk of loss and the ability to make seven, eight or 9%. Well, why, why'd you come with stock picks then? I mean, you're still telling me to buy a Philip Morris, an Annalee, or, or a Ferrari. So you just told me all the reasons why I want alternatives to the stock market. Why, why, talk, start with number one. Why Philip Morris in the kind of environment in which you just described? Yeah, well, well, Scott, as you know, you guys asked for three stock picks. So this is these are some of our three favorite names right now. Oh, we didn't pry it out of you, Guy <laughs> I mean, you, you, come on now. Come on, we didn't arm wrestle you for them. You know that. I mean, you, if you're if you're if you're recommending these things, you must you must believe in them, despite oh, you know what course. you think. No. Better so, opportunities may exist elsewhere, but why do you like these? Yeah. So in the case of Philip Morris, it's really straightforward. It's a great defensive, a great meat dollar staple. You know, the dollar we think is getting close to topping out here. You have the match deal. You have the ICOs. Um, you know, smokeless uh, or you know uh, non um, uh, ignitable. Uh, nicotine delivery system. And so we think of that dividend yield well above the 10 year, it's a great defensive to hang out in. And then if you look at uh, um, Ferrari, it's a little bit different, right? Where, you know, you have tremendous out year growth. And ultimately, it's not about the next year's growth, but it's about incredibly resilient demand. And when you think about uh, the uber rich, uh, not guys like you, me and you, Scott, but guys a lot richer, you know, they're incredibly. You don't need to tell me that, Troy. I already knew that. <laughs> at least, they're, they're, at least as it relates to me. Yeah, they're incredibly inflation resilient and they're incredibly recession resilient. So you look at the last 18 months, demand has been remarkably stable because the uber rich don't care about inflation. And when we ultimately go into recession next year, great. Guess what? The uber rich don't care about that either. You know, and then lastly, if you look at Annaly, what's interesting about that is that is a very juicy way of playing. Uh, what are now close to record-wide agency RMBS spreads. So if you look back over history, they've really only been wider two, three weeks ago or during the global financial crisis. Um, and a lot of that was driven by Fed QT. Um, the credit quality of agency RMBS is excellent right now. So if you can tolerate the vol, and that's the key, because we just talked about we're in a bear market, there's going to be more volatility. That's one way of earning a tremendous dividend yield, which is over 16% and eventually playing for agency spread tightening. So that, that's why those are our three highest conviction names right now. But in general, be careful, protect capital, don't be a hero, focus on strategies that did well in 22 and have a better outlook in 23. I hear you. I was just having fun with you at the top. And in all seriousness, oh, before, course, I, I let you, before I let you go, I mean, do you think 2023 is going to be another year where other things outperform equities? Yeah, I think it's almost a certainty, Scott, right? Look, the, if you ignore everything said in the financial press or that people discuss on great programs like your own, the number one golden rule for risk taking is, is money supply growing faster than nominal GDP like it was in 20 or 21. And when it is, you can take risk and take risk with confidence. But when money supply is actually contracting at record paces, it's very hard to have a sustainable bull market. Yes, you can have bear market rallies. We've already had three, but it's very hard for assets to inflate. And so that's why like, if you look at real estate, you want to be senior in the capital structure. You want to be the bank, not the bricks. If you look at multi-strategy funds, you want to take advantage of volatility and interest rate volatility or agency RMBS spreads. There are so many things to do now in alternatives. And the beauty of it is 
you don't have to be, you know, a, a multi-billion dollar endowment or foundation to do it anymore. Uh, the, the asset class has been democratized through the efforts of firms like ours and others. We'll leave it there. You lost a few points at the beginning, but you gained them back at the end. Those nice comments about our program.